right now um i'll show a little clip of my previous video where i made a video basically saying like does the drz 400 do well on highways right now my bike is fine man it's uh it still has power to give it does fine you know it's not really an issue it's just that i want it to be better where i was getting like an mpg loss i noticed i just think it'd be better to carry it a little bit taller and then do some performance mods to compensate for the power loss when you gear taller so to explain it in like really simple terms, when you have a, a bigger rear tooth sprocket, uh, more teeth in the rear means more torque off the line. And when you have a, a smaller front sprocket, that means same deal. If you, if you bump it down to like a 13 in the front and then bump up the rear, that's gonna make it a lot more torquey. Uh, I don't really want that. That's more for like dirt riding. And uh, I'm basically on the road to converting this to a street street mod, you know, the SM. I'm doing, you know, three three teeth down in the rear from 44 to 41 tooth sprocket. And then I'm going up to uh, 15, uh, 15 tooth uh, from a 14. So like I said before, that's a three to one ratio. They say that every tooth in the front that you move up or down is essentially going up or down three teeth in the rear. And so this is essentially gonna bump everything up uh, a gear. I don't really wanna record the whole process and make it instructional, uh, just on like, you know, like the whole, the whole like, oh yeah, you know, you gotta do this and that and this and that. If you guys have any questions, just feel free to let me know. Um, it's a pretty straightforward process. You just gotta take off the rear sprocket, take off all the guards and everything, and then uh, unbolt the front sprocket. And then after you do all that, um, the only thing that's gonna be kind of tricky, because I haven't done this before, is getting the chain tension right, because if your chain's too tight, that's bad for your bike. Um, if it's too loose, you get a lot of chain slap. So I think if we gear it up a little bit taller, I think we could hit 100 and see if, uh, see if this gearing really does make a difference or not. So let's get started on the build. First issue you ran into with this bike. So I guess the chains on these bikes, they don't have a master link. And for those of you who don't know what a master link is, this part can pop off through the master link and then you could detach the whole chain easily. Now this is just reliant on you having enough slack or play to pull the whole thing off. And chains are anywhere from 80 to 150 bucks. So I'm not trying to buy a new chain. My, uh, the SM set does not have, um, does not have a master link on it either. So this is kind of a drag, but um, I'm gonna go get a chain splitting kit and then uh, throw a master link on it. All right guys, so after excruciating hours of screaming, cussing, uh, you fill in the blank, of just working on this thing, dude. You know, I wanted to make a tutorial for all this, but it literally has taken so long that it just wasn't even worth the time to, you know, literally break apart everything that I was doing. So here's some issues that I ran into. Now, with this rear sprocket, so this is the old one, right? Now with this old sprocket, one of the six bolts holding this on was a pain. I put WD-40, you know, penetration fluid, whatever you want to call it, on it. Um, I, I did all this stuff to break it apart. I eventually, what I had to do was I took a Torx bit because it was stripped essentially. So as you can see, if this focuses, I don't think it will, um, the end of that is just gnawed because I, I even tried taking a Dremel to the end where the nut was and cutting it, you know, cutting it up and whatnot. And that also didn't work. So the best trick to do, if you have a stripped Allen, um, Allen head bolt is to take a Torx bit, hammer it, just hammer it in as hard as you can. And once you hammer it in as hard as you can, like I can't even get this thing off yet, but once you hammer it in as hard as you can, just torque it as hard as you can, dude, and this thing should come out. We also had the front sprocket be a pain. Now it is covered by this little plastic cover, but Pretend the front sprocket's right here, right? The issue with that was that it's a 30 mil socket and I had a breaker bar, I had everything to take that apart. Nothing was working, man. 
you need some type of impact wrench, whether it be pneumatic or electric, uh, take an impact wrench to that because that will do the job fine. I actually had to call my mechanic and say, hey, look, you know, um, I need to, need to take this thing off, but I need an impact wrench. You might if I stop by. Literally wrote it over there with the you know, cover open. He, he took his impact wrench and just popped it off like six, six times where you know, it smacks it when it's on it, came right off. And then he just did two clicks back on. So I was able to ride home and then take it off. So that's the pain with that. So these videos were, you know, the guy's like, oh yeah, you just, you just take off the crown bolt, do this and that. And you know, it's like, we all know it's a straightforward process, but what I'm gonna tell you that other videos won't is that the difference is, <laughs> I keep it real, man. This was such a pain and these might look you or these might look like old or whatever. I didn't use the old ones. Don't use the old ones. Try to get a new set. My uh, gears, since they are only 200 miles used, they actually came with the OEM ones. So I put those on. I didn't torque them down too hard. And I bought a new set of these where it has the nylon, nylon thread lock at the end. Now, one thing to note too that I actually made the mistake of, this is just part of the whole learning process, is that your caliper is actually held in by this part right here. That's part of your caliper. Now, there's a spacer right here too that's kind of mashed into it, as you can see. So that spacer, when I put this on for the first time, actually pushed this forward, and it looked normal at first because I slid the axle through when I was buttoning everything up. Well, that's already a mistake in itself because the caliper has to be you know, the, the axle has to be put through the caliper too to make sure that this caliper is, the, I just rode this bike so I'm kind of trying to not get burnt. That's so this caliper can go all the way over the rotor and get all the meat as you can see like right here. The OEM chain does not come with the master, uh, master link. So what uh, master link does this bike take? Well, the master link that I put on it is actually a DID master link this is a did 530 clip link okay i have a 520 chain a drz 400s have a 520 chain this guy told me he said use the did one and the rk one and you should be able to uh, achieve you know putting a master link on this chain i'm done with the regearing on this bike man and i'm so excited to show you guys uh, how much of a difference it really does make on the highway so in the blink of an eye Let's go on the road. Hey, so we're here with the DRZ 400, all uh, all tuned up with the new the new gearing. I greased up the chain again, cleaned up the area. Oh, that that bolt is coming undone. <sighs> nice. Let's see if 1541 works. Let's go. Let's go. Let's mess up my lawn. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay, so first gear. First gear is, uh, wow. That's a lot taller. I'm still in first right now. Wow. Oh my god. Dude, this gearing. If you're wondering why I'm not wearing gloves and shit, it's just because I'm, I'm taking a short ride out right now. This is this is just a test ride because I actually have a dental appointment soon. Wow. Second gear to 45. Third gear to 60. Fourth gear to 75. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. Uh, is it clean? Is it clean? Woo! Yeah! Dude! What the heck? It feels like this bike woke up! Man, and there's really no, there's not a huge power loss. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Let's fucking get around these people. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! I think I'm in fourth. Oh my god, dude, this is the sixth gear everyone's been wanting on the DRZ 400, man. Woo! The 
this feels like it has a six gear now. This is amazing. When you jump up one tooth in the front, and when you jump up or go down in the rear, that essentially will give you taller gearing. If I was to raise up the rear, if I was to give the rear like a 47 tooth sprocket or higher, that would make it way more torquey and uh, way more uh, dirt driven. You know, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll run like 1547 or 1447 for the dirt. And that's that's a good ratio. You know, you got a lot of you got a lot of that quick torque, but dude, I mean, this thing's this thing's quick. Well, uh, I'll run it a little bit longer. I got time for that. That is awesome. So 1541 gearing. That is, for me at least, that is the magic number. See if it is for you guys. I'm so happy with this mod. This is probably my favorite mod I've done to this bike so far, dude. This is awesome. So, if you like this video, guys, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Subscribe, anything you guys want. Throw me a comment of hate, of love. Like I said, anything you guys want, the ball is in your court. I'm gonna head home and go to the dentist, but for all my new subscribers, thank you guys for watching, and the old ones too. And I'll see you guys next time.